Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Montgomery and welcome to Tax Planning on the Whiteboard. Remember, if you like what you hear, hit that subscribe button. Today, we're gonna learn about other people's mistakes. In particular, and in the unfortunate circumstance of a divorce, how do retirement accounts usually get split up? Quick disclaimer guys, this is not specific information to anyone watching the video. Your circumstance is most likely pretty unique. So if you wanna use this as general information and education only, I highly recommend continuing. But please don't implement any strategy you hear without first talking to your tax professional. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's go to the whiteboard. Real life court cases and IRS rulings oftentimes expose serious mistakes and complete misunderstanding of retirement rules. IRA and retirement plan guidelines can be extremely complicated and neglecting the details could be disastrous. Let's take a look at the Kirkpatrick case. After a divorce, the couple agreed that Dr. Kirkpatrick would transfer 100,000 from his IRA to an IRA for his ex-spouse. Sounds pretty simple. Dr. Kirkpatrick proceeded to take two distributions from his IRA. He then made payments to his ex. In his mind, he completed the order from the divorce decree. But to his surprise, this was not the proper way to execute a transfer in a divorce from an IRA. The tax court ruled withdrawals were taxable. And guess who they were taxable to? Dr. Kirkpatrick. Now, I'm not sure if he was still a doctor in the medicine field practicing, but just imagine if he was and the potential high tax brackets many doctors find themselves in. So this could have been and most likely was a pretty costly mistake, not to mention the potential state taxes as well. In fact, there are only two ways to make a tax-free transfer of an IRA in a divorce proceeding. Number one, change the name of the IRA to the ex-spouse. Number two, complete a direct trustee to trustee transfer of the assets to the receiving spouse's IRA. What you cannot do is take a distribution from an IRA and then deliver those funds to the ex-spouse. Imagine if they did that and they did it that way, not only the tax implications for Dr. Kirkpatrick, but if they then put that into the ex-spouse's IRA, the IRS could have and most likely looked at that as an excess contribution to her IRA and could find a 6% uh, tax on top of that for an XS contribution. So pretty uh, disastrous mistake. So make sure that you don't do that. All right, now let's take a look at a second case. So keeping kind of on the same theme, what about a prenuptial agreement? Well, let's take a look at the Sandler case. And the tax court ruled that a prenup does not qualify as spousal consent. So let's give you a little bit of background here. Debbie and David Sandler, they signed a prenuptial agreement. They waived claims to each other's retirement plans. This was a second marriage for David. David wanted the funds in his, IR, in his ERISA plan, 401k, to go to his children from his first marriage. Unfortunately, David never completed a beneficiary form before his death on the 401k. Now remember, they had a prenuptial agreement signed and in place. Debbie and the children from David's first marriage, they both claimed the death benefit. Again, David wanted the death benefit to go to the children. Guess what the tax court ruled? Well, guess what? it ruled for Debbie. 
How is this decision possible considering she signed a prenup waiving her rights to his ERISA plan? Well, ERISA plans require spousal consent, so wouldn't the prenup have met that spousal consent provision? You would think it would. However, according to the tax court, Debbie never actually gave the required consent. A prenuptial agreement is not spousal consent. Can anybody guess why? Because at the time of the signing, she was not a spouse. She was a fiance, so she could not give consent. Always, and I mean always, make sure that your beneficiary designations are current and up to date. Simply changing your will, even creating a trust, or in this case, signing a prenup, does not mean your intended wishes will be followed. Super important. Again, always seek out professional help to help you with your specific circumstances. If you like these videos, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, it's that easy. I'm Jeff Montgomery, and we'll see you next time on Tax Planning on the Whiteboard.